Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be doing some enterprise level object oriented programming. It's not really what I consider object oriented programming, but nevertheless, this is what we're doing. We did functional programming, a little bit of meta programming, full meta programming. What does this actually look like in the wild? That's what we're going to be exploring today. Don't forget if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. And I know a lot of you have been complaining about me using the light mode. I hear you. Let's go ahead and get started. So uh, the solution is pretty much the same. I have an enterprise OP project right over here where I copied stuff across from one of the other projects. So the setup is the same. We still have the factory for creating this query predicates object which is a dictionary or you can consider this a map. So for some kind of key, we want to resolve a map which is going to take that value and map it across to a predicate. If we're doing enterprise level OOP, the code on line 19 is illegal. You can't do it. Why? I don't know. I don't make the rules. You just can't do it. So what we're really trying to do is based on some kind of incoming value, we're trying to produce this predicate over here. Let's do this. We will come back to our project query predicates again, which can't use it. We'll have to make up our own type. So first of all, let's create a directory. This is going to be query predicate factory. Let's go ahead and add an interface. I query predicate uh, factory. Now that we have the interface, uh, what do we actually put in here? If we have our dictionary, what we really have is a object that we resolve ba based on a string. So there are two factories in here, right? So we supply a key, we get a factory, and then we give another value to that factory. And that is going to give us a predicate. So we're actually going to need two factories. The first factory is the query predicate factory. The second factory is going to be a regular predicate factory, right? So the first thing that we're doing over here is we want to based on a key return this factory over here. Since we don't have that interface just yet, let's go ahead, copy this. I'll slap this down here. We'll remove the query and there we have I predicate factory. We're going to create it based on some kind of key. And then we're going to create a func. I don't know how link has made it into enterprise, but func uh, using funks is legal. And that's what we're going to return from here. We're going to create this based on some kind of value. So this factory right over here, let's create a derived type. Well, we'll call it public. Uh, let's go ahead and implement all the members. I think best case scenario in this case, we supply a key and then on a switch case statement, we return one of the implementations. So for one of the I predicate factories, we're going to create a derived type and this is going to be the vector X predicate factory, right? So we're comparing the individual property. And if in the future, a new property comes along, super clean code, you just create a new factory it will be automatically registered with the uh, well, no, you, you, you write an additional clause here, but you get the picture, super neat factory, register it, and everything just works. Now let's go ahead and put public right over here. If the key is going to be x, right, may, perhaps we want to make sure and to lower this, uh, this will evaluate to a new vector predicate factory or vector x predicate factory, sorry. While we have this, we are going to return uh, the vector that is coming in here, not vector e. On this vector, we will grab x. And what are we doing? Are we comparing equals, not equals? The space in this uh, function is a little bit unknown at this point. So what we actually want to do is kind of try to see the abstraction for what it is. Let's say we will also have a vector y predicate factory. So for when we have the uh, y over here, we will return y predicate factory. And now that we have two points, we can kind of see that, uh, yeah, perhaps uh, we're going to have a value in the first place and then uh, value, uh, let's say everything past the first one is going to be the number, uh, which we are going to want to parse. So int parse. 
This is going to be the comparison character right over here. And we're going to need to take this work, do the same work over here. How can we possibly share this work between the two places? We are object oriented programmers. We create a base class public abstract class base vector predicate factory. Let's just slap it on here. Base remove the X, bada bang, bada boom. We give it a nice old protected, give it a bull, uh, let's say compare and then give it a body. Uh, the first parameter is going to be vector 3D vector. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, remove the 3D. We already know it's a 3D vector. And the next is going to be the actual value that is being supplied. Now we can move this logic over here. And actually, sorry, this is not vector 3D. This is going to be the actual property. So let's say that this is just going to be some kind of number uh, uh, to compare, right? Why not? Or actually vector property. So we have the vector, we have the value, we know how we want to compare it, and we have the number that we're comparing it against. I can use if statements, I am uh, fully capable of that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, let's use uh, modern C sharp features. Uh, let's say we'll have L G over here, a vector property will be compared to the number by equals right over here. Uh, let's copy this a couple of times, uh, paste it, don't forget the commas, we'll then have uh, less than, I'm gonna, should, okay, I'm not gonna be lazy, I'm gonna add the default arm argument out of range exception, right? Now that we have our compare function, uh, let's take the factory over here, uh, slap it on here and on here. We now use compare on vector x and we also pass the value down there. Look at that. Uh, let's take this code over here, place it over here. Why? Uh, remove the comp and number. We will then take this over here. Uh, use this for Z. This is going to be Z. And we gotta not forget to take this factory. Uh, slap it on here. All of these uh, cannot exist in the same file. Everything has to be in its own files, right? So here we have our neat folder structure organization. So over here now where we have query predicates, uh, we can't really use that because that's illegal. And uh, this uh, class over here, we don't really need it because, well, our factory so far is uh, super simple. We can just supply a new instance of it. So let's use iQuery predicate factory. We are going to be registering this interface and we're going to be registering this implementation for it. Uh, remove whatever we were putting here. Super silly, don't want to be doing that. And there we have it. All we have to do now is inject the interface for the key that we have. And this is actually a factory. Uh, let's take this factory, place it over here. We're going to create a based on a key var predicate factory. We now take the predicate factory and we create as long as this doesn't error out. And I'm hoping that it won't error out just to avoid all the try catch malarkey. I'm just going to do this as long as the string is not null, we're going to create our predicate and place it into here. Let's double check if this works. So dot watch. So there we have it x equals five. And obviously, we got to use something like e. And let's say z less than 50. Well, definitely don't want to do it like this. Less than 50. What if it's less than 20? Do we have any of those? Yeah, so looks like this stuff is working equals 20. We don't have a g greater than 20. Yeah, it looks like that's good. Nice. Uh, all that's left is to really try to benchmark it and see how we do, right? All right, everybody, here we are. This is the benchmark that I have written up. Again, I just copied across the method where it iterates. I slept in, slept in, uh, slapped in the iQuery predicate factory right over here. It gets set up right over here along with the rest of the stuff. Here is the query collection that we're running against. We're just using X, Y, Z. We don't use W because we haven't accounted for that use case just yet. Here were the previous results. Place your bets. Where do you think our object oriented solution is going to land? One, two, three. Ah, uh, that's a terminal. We get another countdown. One, two, three. And uh, what do you know? Uh, listen, it may be at the bottom of performance, 
but the code is much readable and we have a neat uh, folder structure organization and you know sometimes that's all that matters when juniors come in uh, you know they need to be able to uh, see what the code is doing you know so let's not worry about the benchmarks uh, you know that's not the that's not the important part right so why is everything so bright? What the hell? Let me put these back on. Who needs light anyway, right? Anyway, this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully now you have a better idea of how to write enterprise level object oriented programming and the benefits of it really. As always, don't forget if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. I have a C Sharp course that is out if you would like to know how to write C Sharp as I do. Highly recommend you take a look at it. If you would like to get the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will really appreciate it. And a big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You really help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.